I'm David Smith and I'm the director of the Kaiser Institute for Christian Teaching and Learning at Calvin University. And this is the second of three videos in which I'm introducing a little of what the Kaiser Institute is about, what its major emphases are, what it's trying to achieve. In the last video I talked about our research projects, our conference, our journal. Uh, in this video I want to focus on our work in relation to curriculum and teaching and learning resources. Now I'll say right up front, we're not a curriculum publisher and we're never going to be a curriculum publisher. We don't publish entire uh, grade level math programs, that kind of thing. That's, that's not who we are. Uh, but we are interested in trying to take uh, research and the latest thinking about how faith might relate to teaching and learning and try to flesh that out into resources that help us to see what this might actually look like in the classroom. We don't just want to end up with theory that it's very difficult to imagine in practice. So one example of a project like this was a number of years ago, we gathered a number of, uh, of Christian uh, educational experts, curriculum people, uh, together uh, one summer, and we began work on a project that became What If Learning. Uh, it's a website that exists at whatiflearning.com where we generated a large number of examples of teachers trying to connect their faith to how they structure their, their teaching and learning uh, in classrooms. Uh, and you can access that, that website for free. Now the goal of that kind of resource is to, to offer prototypes, to offer examples of someone thinking differently because of their faith roots, uh, someone reapproaching their, their teaching and learning. And as part of the What If Learning project, we, we kind of boiled the whole process down to three steps that we asked teachers to think about. And the first of these we, we called seeing anew. This is the moment when you take part of your teaching and learning, something you took for granted in your classroom, uh, part of how things work, and you step back and you draw on the resources of your faith and you look at it and you say, could this work differently? Is there, is this really, is there a good match between this and my convictions and what I'm trying to achieve? Or is there something here that needs to be tweaked a little that we need to look at from a different angle? So maybe this is easiest to get out through a concrete example. So one example that, that came up uh, out of some of our curriculum projects was uh, in a conversation with some local teachers once, we ended up talking about homework. Now homework is one of those things, happens all the time in school. We all think we know how to assign homework. But we started realizing that one of the effects of homework, especially at the high school level, is often to isolate high school students from their families. Uh, I noticed this when my own daughter was going through high school, that when the semester was going on, we sort of lost our daughter for a few months because she would be at school all day from early in the morning until supper time, and, uh, and then she would have several hours of homework to do, and the homework was almost always read something, write something, research something online. And so the homework would tend to draw her into her room with a laptop, with some books, with a worksheet. And a few hours later, she would emerge kind of too tired for further human interaction. And, uh, and the day would end and we would rinse and repeat the next day. So we started wondering together what would happen if you started actually designing homeworks uh, in a way that encouraged uh, meaningful interaction between family members? What could homework actually contribute uh, to the health of families and to the health of the larger school community? Uh, and this came out of our, our Christian concerns just with the, uh, the quality of Christian community, the strength of families, um, and students need to grow in their relationships, not just in their, in their intellectual formation. Uh, so my daughter started coming home from school after we talked about this with, with some of her teachers and she would appear in the family room in the evening and say, I have homework for my religion class. And do you guys have some time because I have to ask you whether you grew up Christian or whether you became Christian at some point and what that was like for you and, and how that went. Do you, have, do you have time to talk that through? Uh, or another evening it would be, I have, to, I have homework from my government class, I have to ask you what you think about the government using drones to do surveillance on people. Is that, is that okay? Can we have a conversation about that? Or there was a media homework to watch the same TV show and discuss its values. So this became part of uh, how we started thinking about curriculum design. So when we ran into a project on science education, uh, which was published on another website at teachfastly.com, uh, we ended up designing a whole series of homework activities for science classes that were also focused on building relationships, thinking about how the relationship between faith and science is, is not just about controversial issues and what we believe about certain scientific findings, 
But if you want to think about science in the context of faith, you might also want to think about what happens when teenagers go to school and learn new scientific information that their parents might not know and how that affects their relationships with their family. So we started coming up with homework activities like what would happen if from science class a student went home and the homework was to walk through their neighborhood with a family member and notice something they hadn't noticed before. Notice how light shines differently off glass than off concrete. Uh, notice how plants are different colors of green in different locations. Uh, just notice something in the environment that you hadn't noticed before and then go back and pull up science.com, pull up Wikipedia and do some research together and see if you can figure out what science might actually help you understand this thing that's going on in your immediate environment and then bring that research back into class the next day. So again, this was trying to design uh, a sequence of learning that, that included science learning Learning, uh, but was also trying to strengthen relationships in, in the family. Um, I was also trying to evoke a sense of wonder, just a sense of awareness of what's going on in the environment. So that's just one small example. What we then try to do with that is to, to offer those examples as provocations. Here's one we made. What could you do differently? What homeworks do you assign in your classroom? How could you redesign them? Uh, is the homework you design, its learning processes, does that really fit the aspirations of your school in terms of your students' overall formation? Or is it just filling time uh, with, with shifting information from, from one place to another? So homework is just one example. But what we try to do uh, consistently in our curriculum work is to generate these very concrete examples of if we think differently about what we're doing because of some faith emphasis, because of some Christian conviction, uh, how does that then play out in actual curriculum design? And then we tend to try to give those away online. So as well as research, we try to flesh things out. We try to build the concept car, give it a spin around the track to show what it might look like, and then hope that other people might take it away and experiment on their own.